a very popular man, Greg Norman. Only one victory in this great championship, and in fact, only one major, which would surprise anyone in golf, knowing as he plays. And Turnberry, we return there next year. I have a feeling that Greg Norman will not spare himself today. He's going all out for victory. Mm, the teeth are gritted. And that, provided it doesn't kick to the right, is very, very long indeed. And it's settled on a nice, gentle upslope, which will do no harm at all for the second shot. And so he can get at this. Just a, a wedge for Greg Norman. Going for it now. Is he going to get a friendly bounce? He certainly is. That's a very good opening shot. And beware all who are watching. Third green. Now he coming in from a different, a difficult angle here. And he's, well, now that's unfortunate. He's just gone through six or seven feet. The first tee waiting to play. You have to wait till your name is called and it's time. The champion golfer of 92. Will he be the champion golfer of 93? Nick Faldo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the 132nd Open Championship. On the tee, Nick Faldo. kicks but he's going to stay in the fairway it sort of killed a little bit distance there so Corey's right down the fairway too it's a little short of Faldo's they're both safely in the fairway at the first hole start of the last round Beautiful shot, it should come around a little bit from there, and he'll have that for that to set a new course record. What a great round of golf. Remarkable round of golf from Payne Stewart. He had to contend with quite a heavy shower for about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Well, John Daly launching one away at the fifth. Obviously gone for the carry across the corner. And waiting to see the short tee shot here he's left himself a second of 195 yards some 75 yards or so behind greg norman's uh, drive on an uphill slope here Ooh. 
And that one escaping to the right of the green. Leaves himself there a difficult little pitch over a valley. Coming from the semi-rough, so difficult to get any bite. He's got a shot of about 40 yards. Now, Faldo shot from a slightly easy position. He's another 10 or 12 yards down the course. 185 yards. Bunkers to carry, and you pitch on a downslope on the front of the green. The pin's 17 yards on today. So, not his most accurate of iron shots, but in no trouble there. Chipping a putt for a par from about uh, 25 yards. Now the 18th green, and uh, well, we could be about to witness a, a historic moment. Payne Stewart, bit with a long putt for a round of 62. Well, I can remember when dear Di Reese went round the old course in St Andrews in 67 and people wondered uh, whether anyone would ever do better than that. And they went on beating it, beating it, beating it. And eventually, Curtis Strange went round in 62, uh, which I find almost impossible to believe, seeing there's only two short holes. And, uh, well, two putts for a 63, one for a 62. Truly remarkable if it should go in. Duffy Waldorf. How's Duffy doing? Duffy's a two over. Level par, this for a 70. A small putt for a 63. To equal the record set by Nick Fowler a couple of days ago. Well done. Terrific stuff. Thirty-one, thirty-two. Uh, we swing across to the first. Corey Pavin's little pitch from the side of the green. Speeding on. So neither Taylor nor Faldo playing this little chip, six or seven iron from the edge of the green. Flips it up, running well. Running beautifully. He really is a master of that shot. Oh, probably no time. Kept it low to the ground, ran it at the hole, nearly hold it. Now this is Bernard Langer who birdied the first hole with a long putt and putted like a magician yesterday. In she goes, an opening par four. Now Norman tapping this one in for his par at the second. Under has hit a smashing iron shot in. Carl Kavecchia also. Mark Carl Kavecchia, who you all remember winning in that playoff at Troon, at Royal Troon. A round yesterday of 66, one of the group of four players who were overnight leaders. And they've had all morning to just sit and watch and wonder at what was happening with Fred Couples until he had a terrible finish the last two holes he dropped shots at when he had been eight under par now Kalkovic. 
really wants to get himself a couple of birdies early on, and this is a hole that you really think of as a birdie hole as you play this championship course. You almost feel like you've dropped a shot if you haven't birdied this one. And there aren't that many opportunities here. Haven, who many thought would be the biggest threat here. started off like this yesterday afternoon and I thought we were in for an absolute uh, sort of plethora of birdies and then it sort of died down and went a bit quiet but uh, today they're starting off well now Langer who matched Norman's birdie on the first is now trying to do it again here on the third Langer one shot out of the lead at the moment this little putt for his birdie three. Yeah. Yes, and the cheers ring out again. Nine under now. Oh, and Nick Fowler. Now, Nick Price has got this testy little putt for a par, and this is critical for him. He's three shots out of the lead now, and he can't afford to get any further back. Third. Well, he's stopped the rot and made a birdie at the last. See if that gets him on a roll. Be right, he's saying, so that's a good one. So it's just a little too... There, it looks like it's just coming back onto the edge like Langer's did a moment or two ago. Too many steroids. <laughs> Now Corey Pavin, who is the leading American flag carrier here, Ryder Cup player, and as Steve said, not had a lot of great results in final rounds of major championships, but like Tom Kite, I'm sure one day it's going to happen. Back off the slope behind him to here, uh, two. This to go ten under. Oh, it is. So a three, a birdie, and the one birdie in three holes. If he keeps doing that, he might well win. Huge volunteer force here. Over 650 youngsters under 18 are working at the championship. There's a tremendous uh, turnout for the young people. That's along with all the other volunteers of the medical corps and the policemen and the garbage collectors and the waitresses and washers uppers. It's a huge business. Incidentally, apart from a small hiccup the other day, getting in and out of here has been pretty good. The police have done a super job. This is Nick Price here for a birdie. The fifth. 
And he's gone left down over the small bunker, hopefully to cut it back to the fairway. And that's his policy. That was beautifully judged. Set it over the low hill and uh, brought it nicely back. And the further right it goes, the easier the second. And he's looking very happy, very confident with his swing. A swing of great precision. And this one, well, it's a technique all of his own. You've missed uh, seeing the fancy practice swing that he makes, but now the actual one is very orthodox. Go too far left, you can get kicked down into there. And that's a very unfortunate shot for, for Corey Paven. Norman and Faldo at nine under par with Nick Price uh, emerging as an extra threat at seven under par after his birdies at the second and the fourth. And anyone dropping shots in this uh, mass of birdies that seem to be being scored in the opening holes amongst the leaders almost moves back two shots. Faldo, who's had a very nice drive here at the fourth. Good flight, got a bit of run out of it. 275 yard drive and 190 yards to go, so uh, a relatively short second shot. And today though, tucked one over on the right. If you miss it right, it's a dangerous spot. Very difficult to get up and down from there. Hitting a five iron, he's going for the pen. Well, that was a very nice strike. He's got a little bit of rise, held it up into the right, left breeze. A lovely shot. Would have looked good from where they were, but it bounced hard and through and into a very nasty little spot. Bit of green to work with, but not. Uh, not what he would have expected when the ball was in midair. John Daly at the seventh hole. Daly one under at this stage. <laughs> Back to the fourth. And of course, John Daly dropped three shots in the last two holes, hence why he's only was one under playing seven. You can see this is where the, uh, the water has run, the automatic watering system. This is the low point behind the green, and that's why it's a different colour to the rest. It gathers there, and it's left a very lush spot, and his ball is lying down in it. If it's a hole, that'll help. And he's got Langer's putt coming back. And I don't have for a moment think that Langer twitched his. I think it just was a misjudgment. A misread. Nick Price drives at the par 5 seventh. Price now just two behind the leaders and this par five offering birdies galore, but I don't think from that spot. Faldo, what a, a lovely little chip he played from that lush wet spot that Bruce was describing. We saw Bernhard Langer from a very similar place miss out. I've been fascinated watching Nick at practice and in the putting and the, the backswing where others try to keep the putter head low to the grass, his sort of comes directly up from the ball on an angle and then he knocks it downwards. It's a great discussion between the partners here. See how it lifts very quickly up and then through. I think you see it more when the ball's there even. As for four, be a good four. It would be a deserved four. 
see how she's got her back to him. Look. And they both missed it. I think that must be a very difficult putt to read. Two of the best putters in the world have just missed it. Now, he has uh, gone one behind Greg Norman by missing that. Uh, oops, for the first time he's relinquished the, the lead in this championship. It's the second round. Brilliant 63 in on the second day. A five. A shot dropped, though, and Fowler, who didn't deserve any worse than a four there. His tee shot was excellent. His iron shot was good. It just shot to the back into a bad lie. Go back there, please. So the players in the final group, both dropping a shot at this fourth hole. It's virtually been the most difficult hole, but today it seemed to be a gentler proposition. There are very fickle things, seaside links courses. The next hole, the fifth, for a three. It's got it. He's got it. He's got it. So that's it. Well, that certainly evens up the little one he missed at the last. He goes to eight under and joins Faldo. He was two shots behind him about a minute ago. Up down there on the left. And he's caught the middle one of them. Oh, well, he knows he's in there. I know it's playing over sand hills. the fifth now there's the ball of Nick Fowler down there at the bottom right of your screen and uh, he will have to draw on his resources very early on this Sunday but first it's going to be Corey Pavin to play from 165 yards didn't quite make that little triangle over to his uh, left side of the fairway which is high ground just rolled off the edge left himself a blind shot here can't even see the top of the pin. Just a little breeze blowing from left to right now. Should get a fair amount of loft on this though. He's on an uphill lie. Just a six iron from there. Cut. Get right a little. Yes, nice shot that. You could see with the loft of the club and the help of the upslope, the ball stopped quite quickly. Now, Faldo is down the left side in the first of the two bunkers. The lie's clean, but difficult. He's down in a big hollow down there, so again, he can't see anything of the green. Hundred and sixty yards to go for Nick Faldo. He's coming down the breeze a little more. Can possibly get home with a six or seven iron from there. But a very difficult shot. a good recovery lovely shot six on there for Nick Faldo he birdied this hole on the second day during that magnificent 63 Langer for two at the short sixth no just 
too hard on that line. Scores will have been advised. He will know that he now trails by two. Quick look at the leaderboard to confirm Greg Norman two clear of Bernard Langer and Nick Faldo. And uh, this is uh, looking ever more like one of Norman's great last rounds in a major championship. Remember, he came from, what, seven behind at Troon in 1989, lost the playoff to Mark Kalkovecchia, but Faldo is also a man who can produce fireworks on the last day. Well, he needs fireworks, and this is where it could start. He hit a poor tee shot glorious second now he needs a brilliant third has he given it enough <laughs> well he had that look about him in Muirfield around about the 13th 14th holes uh, a year ago and he really has to draw on all his mental resources not his physical yeah, ones they're no okay way. he will see the leaderboards and he will see that no he's far there leaves him two shots behind the australian still working on the putting stroke norman off the seventh day left of the hoist is the line at hollow then you can have a pretty straightforward putt, whichever side you're coming. And it looks as though Nick's got a seven iron in his hand. Uh, just look at that, it's like a pyramid of people across there, isn't it, on the left-hand side? On the maiden. You stand still, please. All the mannerisms of Faldo. That looked like a good contact. It looked beautifully clear. And he's into the trough. A shrug that was only mediocre in his book. Now, Corey Paven. Look out across the bay, other people enjoying other sports out there, oblivious of what's going on over here with us. You watch the little practice routine of Paven now. You watch what he does here up, out, in, and around. A figure eight in uh, all the wrong things. Big dunes. Aldo, this for his two. And he's got it. And one that he really needed pulls him back into one shot behind the leader, Greg Norman. He's a very tough man. You see there, the one drop shot at the fourth hole. One under for the round today. One shot back of Greg Norman. Paven, this putt for par. Drop the shot at one, birdie two. Drop the shot at four after a bad drive. Just to say three shots back of Greg Moore. Dave Marr was just reminding us that Norman three putted here yesterday for a par, and that's a better one, though. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Wow, what he'd have given to have done that the first time. But still, it's a par five. Very, very unfortunate. 
break for Greg Norman. This will do it to par five seventh. It's tee shot. Better watch that bunker. Better watch that bunker. And he's in it, which is going to take out the possibility of reaching the green in two. He knows it. Paven now. corner and sees also about 209 210 yards to the front edge of the green just no depends time, whether that slope in front of him is kind enough to let him get a four iron to it I, I don't think it is I think probably the best he can do is get a five iron well he risks the bank and that's only moved about 50 yards forward, still in the rough. So, potential difficulties for Faldo here at the seventh. Now, Nick Price up ahead. This is the ninth. He's got to make something happen here pretty quick now. Well, how about that for making something happen? Beautiful, beautiful shot. Just about a two-foot. Taps in for on that uh, second shot from the bunker. It seemed to be a five iron. He must have caught it very low or perhaps a little bit thin to drill it into the bank. But uh, it was almost the, the, the type of shot he had there was almost uh, inviting an error. It was uh, flat out, very touch and go when you've got a move ball that far with a five iron. So this is where he needs, if he possibly can, to be a little defensive now. Having um, made rather a mess of the second shot, he's got to get himself back into play. Must try and hit the green. And he's not going to get much stop. It's an awkward shot. The breeze is following. So this ball will chase on. It'll take a lot of roll. So Faldo now must concentrate on making his five. Faldo's shot here onto the green safely. This, of course, is Nick Faldo's birthday today, amongst all the other activities for him. He's dealing with that as well. Nick Price, this for a birdie. That's a nice. And that's what he has to do. He's got to be very aggressive now. And he can take some chances that the others may not be able to take. Those two. Seven under and three shots back of the leader. Now this is Langer's opportunity at the seventh. Oh, that was so close. What a marvelous birdie that would have been. But he, like Norman ahead of him, has to settle for a par five at the seventh.
Corey Pavin, of course, on the green. He three-putted. He had a putt for an eagle here yesterday and three-putted it. So he's got a putt for an eagle again today. The T, Nick Faldo. Who almost escaped a near disaster with a birdie at the seventh, but had to settle for par. Nick just one behind. Board here, which is absolutely incredible. Norman Langer, Faldo, Price, and Pavin. Some of the top players in the world, all on top. This for par four at the eighth for Greg Norman. These are the ones that test your courage, and he's got it. Greg, too, has been putting very well this week, and of course, that's why he's in the lead at 10 under. And there is the quality on that leaderboard as uh, we prepare ourselves for all the drama of the back nine. Greg Norman at 10 under par. Four top three finishes during the course of this year. One uh, at Doral. Missed the cut in the US Open and uh, performed comparatively poorly at Augusta. Shot of the eighth, the well-positioned tee shot. 180 yards to go and that'll be playing a five iron for Nick. A light breeze blowing into his face. Important to get up to this pin, though, the pin 34 yards onto this very long, slender green and a ridge through the middle of it, so you certainly want to get onto the back portion. Well, Fad those judged the length very well on most of his iron shots. Another fine example there. Off the green, but a good shot. Peter Sr. for a birdie at the 10th. Right. No, he's made it. So he goes to six under par. That's in sixth place in a tie with Ernie Epps. Corey Pavin coming from a very similar distance. He's got 177. Narrows at the back here. It takes a bit of finding. Faldo, though, only just off the edge. He can put it from there. This is his birdie opportunity from the right-hand side of the eighth. Oh, what a great effort that was. That almost went in also. But he'll have to settle for par. Means he'll be two shots behind with 10 to play. Greg Norman prepares to tap in to open a two-shot lead at the ninth. Look at the name of Paul Laurie. The young Scott has come onto the leaderboard at five under par. He's had an indifferent season. He qualified by having a very good open at Muirfield last year, but he's having an outstanding day today. This is his second shot at the 15th. He started the day. Who will have heard it and know that one or the other, and they'll look at the scoreboard, which will update itself out there and know who, who it was. Lovely afternoon for golf, a breeze blowing from the southwest, but really not much of a feature in the way these golfers are playing. Nick Price just came up over the shoulder of the 11th. He has this putt for a two. Oh, and just so close. Well, a lot of chances have gone a begging by Price this afternoon. No paving at nine. And that will not be straight. 
but not a no. It's all right. So they applauded Baldo, but not from 135 yards. Very slender green in the flatter part. This ninth green. Big slopes on the left. He's coming in from the best side. Mm, it's a good looking shot. So, Faldo a little long, but a birdie chance. Ernie Ells at the 12th. This for a birdie. He's got it, he's got it. Unfortunately, the 11th, he dropped a shot, so he birded 10, dropped one at 11, and but got it back there. Paul Laurie from Scotland, here at the 16th. Come on, leave the Lord. And that's another good, oh no, it's not. No, it just caught the shoulder and is down in the sand. Now, Pavin, another 15 yards down this hole, but not an easier shot from that angle. He's virtually going to be pitching on a down slope if he pitches the ball anywhere short. If he pitches a little long, a big swale right waits just over this green. So only a wedge, but he's got to get it right. Lively hop. He played. He played it well, but didn't quite get the result he was looking for. Fred Couples at the 13th, second shot. Six under by virtue of a birdie at the 12th, the same hole that Ernie Els got one. So he's sort of seen this putt. We've had the advantage of of the players uh, putting from this side. Big swing from the left. Corey Pavin went first and missed his putt for a three, got a four. So, and it was more or less the same part of the green, so had the, Valder has the advantage of seeing that. That's not going in. Very awkward putt from so short a range. So the gap between Langer, Valder and Norman remains at two. Paul Laurie played the bunker shot to here. He has this for a par, and he's done another one. This is great golf from young Paul. Started the day at one under, now five under. From the King's Links up in the Aberdeen, a golfing center up there that seems to be producing several very good tournament professionals. He was the leader in the Tartan Tour a couple of years ago, and fought his way up through getting a card, some events he didn't get into, some he stood on the sidelines waiting for people to withdraw, but he's making it. We go to Bernhard Langer, who just clings on to the edge thanks to that thick grass. I think that has developed since the heavy rain came just on Wednesday and uh, Thursday. A little bit of lead weight on the bottom of that club head. Eight iron. Faldo first. In fact, Payne had the honour of this tee because he was the last one to have a birdie, which was at the seventh. And this was his tee shot. Lovely driving hole attempt. Very inviting target. Driving up a canyon. And that's over on the other side to where Faldo was later to hit it. Greg Norman leads as the climax builds here at Royal St. George's. Norman at 11 under from Langer and Faldo at 9 under. And then Corey Pavin two shots further back. Ernie Els in the group at 6 under par. Tied for 5th at Muirfield last year. And one of the players that he tied with, Malcolm McKenzie, has come in today with a round of 67. That leaves him at one over par. Scott Nick Faldo at the 399 yard 10th hole, his second shot, coming from just under 140 yards. The pin 18 yards on, but the first 10 yards of this green slopes straight back towards the player, so if you leave it short, there's a fair chance the ball will roll right off the green.
And that one only just holds another couple of yards short. It would have been down off the green. Right on line, though. Aldo's hit a lot of good hand shots today. And there he goes, right to the bottom of the hole it went. A two for Paul Laurie, and we really have seen some, uh, some astonishing shots hold today. It's an eagle. When you're this week, rather, Norman at, and Faldo at 14. And ever mindful, the good professional, he repairs his pitch mark. Seve two at 15, and now Paul Laurie. And at the 71st hole at that. Six under for the round. <laughs> Paven at the tenth from the left side of the fairway. 135 yards. Quite a bit of uh, hill on this hole from the uh, landing area up to the green, about 30 foot rise. Makes the second shot far more difficult to judge. That's coming up short. Hey there. Stop. And sometimes they don't know. Always... to be had for him from the 11th green. 11 under, seven holes to go. Nick Faldo for a three at the 10. In the right lane, just played it up the wrong line just a few inches and it didn't curve back. That's the four for Faldo. Stays nine under. The 18th tee. And the adrenaline will be flowing here. And start off very well. Drifting a touch to the right, maybe. Gust off the fairway on the right-hand side. That's okay. He'll always on the last day of the major championships. And he does take some wonderful photographs. Right. Back to Nick. Faldo at the 11th. The two behind. Greg Norman and there uh, really is great excitement now at the top of the leaderboard as they come for the final half a dozen or so holes conditions out well you can see the sun's out and the breeze well it's there but in no great strength and apart from that 20 minute half an hour quite heavy rain around lunchtime conditions have remained pretty good Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't have any time to have a doze around here, do you? Nice quiet afternoon. I thought one or two of you might have nodded off, but my golly. Can't afford to close your eyes for a second. Now that's spun away a bit further than I thought it might be still a beautifully struck shot from Faldo. There she is, six feet or so. Needs that one. Well, what if that had gone in? Norman at 11 under, Faldo at 9 under par. Really has been extraordinary scoring. You'll recall that only Bill Rogers has completed four rounds of an Open Championship here in under par and that gave him victory in 1981. We've currently got 24 players under par, headed by Greg Norman at 11 under, two shots clear of Nick Faldo. Paul Laurie, his second shot at 18. How he can figure this out now. A 
birdie here would do young Mr. Laurie a world of good. Well, not quite sure with that finish. It's not on the green. Sad to say. So he's down to the right of the green. Pin today in the left center, so he has a little room to play from down there. No littering. Six under par. Struggling for his par here at the 11th. Yeah. Norman nudges one in. And he's really going along very, very confidently and comfortably. 12 under now. At the 11th, Pavin, this for his par three. Faldo, you remember, played a marvelous iron shot that hit the hole inside of Corey still, so Pavin some eight to 10 feet away. Bernard Langer for a birdie at the 12th. So two birdies. Another look at Faldo's shot. This is the 11th. Well, to hit the pin, it could have gone. But a terrific shot. Consider the circumstances, the longest par three, the pressure. This then to get to 10. He's got it. This is absolutely great stuff. There is a very, very tough man as this man is. Craig Norman drives at the 13th. This for the members is the stroke index number one. Down right to the far end of the course. 443 yards. And, uh, Bernard Langer. So Greg Norman leads by two. From Faldo, three from Langer. The rest is beginning to stretch out a little bit now. And something dramatic has got to happen over these last few holes. There's plenty of holes here when drama can suddenly jump up and bite you. Starting right here. Just the shortest of the par fours. And that's going to stop just fine. Can't see where it finished from where he is. Corey Pavin now. He's in the semi-rough. The ball's lying pretty well. His only problem is the wind is pretty much behind him here. This green has got a hog's back that goes down the middle of it, and the pin today is 29 paces on down the right-hand corner. So Bernard has got to come onto the green across the, the hog's back and then let the contours of the green do the rest of the work. Not an easy shot by any means. Probably just a a nine iron from there, maybe an eight iron for Bernhard. Probably an eight iron, in fact, it would be because it's quite a long way still for him from there. But 
and it might just come out of there a bit quick. Uh, is it going to the Hogsback? There it is. That's the Hogsback I was talking about, and that is a wonderful shot by Langer. Only just uh, eight feet, nine feet away. Tremendous blow. Great drive by Greg Norman. Drive of 328 yards down this 13th hole. He's left himself only 129 to go. Straight into the flag. He can on the right hand side he can go right down the green. He doesn't have any problems with it whatsoever. Probably just a wedge. What's happened with this is got it the right side of it. He certainly has. Uh, so another wonderful shot by Norman, and the shark is really biting today. And Faldo almost gone a little bit too left and far with this tee shot. He's in the low part of the fairway, so he doesn't get a view of the bottom of the pin. Just 90 yards to go, hitting a wedge. Give him the birdie chance he needs. Yes, it does. That's a nice shot. Norman at 12 under, Paolo at 10. Sixteenth, Fred Couples putting for a birdie, and he... Oh, she's had a few of them today, has Fred? Three under for day, seven under for the championship. Norman marks his ball at 13. Hands it to his caddy Andy there. Heard Alex say a little while ago how close Greg stands to the ball. He went to Claude Harmon Jr. to try to help him with his game. And one of the first things that Claude told him was to stand closer to the ball like he used to and try to hit the ball harder like the young Greg Norman did and it seemed to straighten out whatever problems that he had. He really does stand close to it, but that's the way Arnold played when he was younger too. Of course, Byron Nelson always said you couldn't stand too close to the ball. So there are theories all around about standing close to it or far away from it, but it certainly did help Greg when Claude got him to move up close to it. I don't think around here you can really get enough lead to feel safe. He's still got that drive to hit at 14, which is so dangerous. And of course, 15, 17, and 18 are very strong par fours. So another big putt. Looks good. Didn't hit it. leader by two 12 under through 13 holes five under for today's round thanks all done. and he too just slides by at the turn went left couldn't believe it, didn't read it, couldn't see it. So it only a par for Nick. Only a par up ahead for Greg Norman. 
Chances coming, chances going. So Langenauer with this, for his birdie. Quite beautifully and finish it off. The nice putt. Peter Senior, it's his par 3 16th, just for a birdie. And he's got it. And I beg your pardon, that's the 15th, and he moves to 8 under for the championship. Just a one drop shot at the first hole. line the out-of-bounds line down the 14th the white stakes and the uh, the white line between them marking the out-of-bounds <laughs> this I suppose is the only remaining dangerous really dangerous drive on the course four dangerous holes or three dangerous holes left after this one now Bernard's played this hole with a lion iron off the tee every other occasion not today wonder why oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. sadly for Bernhard that is out of bounds it's just slipped over the white fence down the right hand side of the 14th so he'll be playing three off the tee yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, now too late, old son. He had his game plan in place. Oh, Greg Norman sees one of his closest pursuers out of bounds. Uh, oh, he's out with the old. He's out with the old Metley. Uh, one thing he mustn't do is, is follow him out of bounds. He's got to get no worse than a five here. He's driven quite beautifully all week. Oh, that's a beautiful drive pitched. Sadly for him, it pitched into the upslope of one of those little humps and killed it. Didn't get any forward chase. Valdo at 13. Now certainly, tournament, oh, it may have jumped out of that. It bounced up, no, and went back down in that bunker. Probably quite close to the bank there. As you've heard, this the number one stroke hole here at Royal St. George's. Peter Senior at the 16th. Well, people have been known to finish with three birdies here. That wouldn't half shake them up if this fellow did just that. It's a good start. Langer hitting three off the tee now. And I'm sure he took that driver and changed his game plan because he knew he needed a four. Now, I don't know why he went back and hit the, hit the iron after that. Now there's no chance to reach the green. Looking ever more like Norman against Faldo, but maybe uh, Peter Senior wouldn't entirely agree with that. He's got himself to eight under par within four of the lead. But it's Norman, still ahead by 12, and looking in a very good position on the 14th. Langer with his problems at the 14th. Faldo at 10 under after 12. Group of players on 7 under. Fred Couples, Ernie Els, and Corey Pavin. And then the heroics earlier on from Paul Laurie. His round of 65, leaving him in lofty company, high on the leaderboard at 6 under par. Down we go to the, towards the 16th, the last short hole, green there on the left, and way down in the far corner, the gallery streaming down the 14th, and 
will go to Nick Price. Up this for a birdie. just skimmed by the edge time and time and time again today. And I fancy uh, around about the 11th or 12th, he started to get a little bit rattled and started playing rather hastily and almost angrily, angry at himself. But he's certainly the star player on the US tour this year. Well, Faldo not very far off line here, but paid the penalty. The ball semi-plugged, it bounced back off the lip. And that's really all he could do, just knock it out 45 degrees off to the left and find the uh, fairway again. Still leaving himself, though, a shot of um, about 130. Peter Senior, this for Bertie to go to nine under. It looks like it would be into a tie for second if he does. And he's got it. He's got it. He's still got a chance. This line is out of bounds at uh, 14. Aldo's had to waste a shot getting out of the bunker at 13. Langer at the 14th. That's his fourth shot. Well, what a moment to let one drift away. Well, the 14th has been a graveyard for many over the years. Great Norman, he's having a cut at it. Well, I say, it looks very wide and open. There's tons of room down the left, but remember, Des Smith carving one away on the right. We thought we'd possibly never escape from that clinging long grass, but... but Greg having a cut. Go on for all your worth. Go on for all your worth. Good swing, Greg. Go on. And a big hop, but it went up in the air instead of forward. But there are two mighty blows. And he's lying all right and lots of room to pitch the ball. Norman looking very good indeed here at the 14th. <laughs> and a critical shot for Faldo. Must get this one close, give himself a chance for a par. His third shot. Well, not a bad effort. He has played his hand shots remarkably well, but uh, it's getting them close. That's the problem. Time running out a little bit for him. Two drives have cost him dearly into bunkers today. That one and the seventh, both dog legs left, where he virtually ran out of fairway. They weren't particularly bad tee shots. T. Peter Senior. Beautiful drive there at 17. Four under for today's round. Played five under since the first hole where he dropped the shot. Lang at the 14th, way back. And that very expensive drive out of bounds. Now he's playing fifth shot. Bernhard Langer's fifth shot here on the 14th. Just 124 yards, in fact, for Bernhard. Difficult green to judge, as we've seen all week. I don't see many of these third shots normally, although this is his fifth. Get close to this, it's very difficult to judge. 
just a wedge. A question of how hard to hit it. You have to feel it in his fingers. Oh, that's a wonderful shot. Absolutely pin high, about 20 feet away. Give himself a chance for a six. Greg Norman striding up there at the head of affairs in more ways than one and uh, looking very confident. 31 out, that really is uh, cracking golf. And we've seen so much good golf today. Indeed, uh, Ian Priman, the amateur champion, putting in the lowest total ever done by an amateur in the Open Championship. That's worthy worthy of a, a little present of some sort i nearly said bung i've been mixing with some strange people this week didn't bung the right geezer now here we go he's got to just get this one up he's uh, remember this is par five so he's not going to lose any ground really to par even if he takes three from here but i fancy with his improved short game and putting and the flatness of the shot the simplicity of the shots the one danger is that he he might rattle it a bit too far glove off you notice then do that with other things I believe it gives them a better feel now this is one of his lofted clubs hands forward club face square little wristy break and then punch down up she goes. Oh, it's a gem. Hello. Oh, no. oh, nearly, nearly, nearly did it again. He held out for a ball, and I think he's, at this moment, we mustn't speak too soon, but at this moment, he's getting a little bit back for all the times he's had the dirty done to him. In the golfing sense, I hasten to add. Oh, it's a wonderful little pitch. I think he might just walk up and nudge that. He looks so relaxed. Mark McCormick was saying this morning he, he'd never he, he'd never seen him look so relaxed. A few split ends, but he looks relaxed. Now, this has to be a fighting putt from Faldo if he's to have any chance. It's for a par four, and he's got it. And that's the courage of the man showing through. Seventeenth hole, Peter Senior's second shot. Senior nine under. Be good, be good. He's talking to it, he's talking to it, and that's another cracking shot. Langer surveying his putt. A tee shot out of bounds, finishing his hopes of the championship. This putt for a six. No. And I just wonder what's going through his mind at this moment just five minutes ago he still had the championship in sight he was playing with the man who was in the lead he had him in his sights and he made a decision on the tee a strangest decision he changed all that he'd planned for the week and hoped to make a birdie to pull himself closer still and paid the price the ultimate price out of bounds is for a seven Applause of sympathy. He's back from 10 to only 8 under. 
What have I done? Faldo at the 14th. Tee shot. He's got to be aware of beware of the out of bounds on the right. And just trundling along. Good, good spot. Well, he really is a fighter, Nick Faldo, but Greg Norman is winning the fight at the moment. Norman, three shots clear at 13 under par. Langer with those big problems at 14, dropping back to 8 under. We've seen some wonderful goals today. We've seen shots hit close. We've seen putts flying in, but there have been uh, other problems for others. Ray Floyd took a 9 at the 14th. Ian Baker Finch reached the turn today at level par, dropped 9 shots in the next 6 holes. No such afflictions of... Uh, Hit Greg Norman, though, 13 under par, having started the day at 7 under. Greg Norman at the 15th. You can see how close he stands. Dave Maher was talking about it. Really is crowded in on the ball. The backswing on this three-quarter length. That's part of the new treatment as well. The three shots and he's hit a cracking drive up to 15. Peter Senior for his fourth birdie in a row. Oh, he hasn't hit it. Oh, you stabbed me vitals. I didn't hit it. Fancy leaving it short. Bernhard Langer, who now lies on his own and in fourth place at eight under par, when he was so much in the hunt all day. And that's a beautiful tee shot, a long way down it goes, down the 15. There's Norman's ball, just a few yards ahead, different line. Corey Pavin at the 14th, second. And she took a driver off the upslope, well, slid it in left to right, chasing it forward. Here she comes. Yeah, and that's a great shot right to the edge of the green from Corey Pavin. Two wonderfully constructed shots for not one of the biggest of hitters. Used a driver, chased it on, got the run onto the green. Nick Faldo with the three wood, got to go for this one. He's got 230 yards to go to the front of the green. Likely makes a birdie on this hole, three behind. It's a little tuft of grass just behind the ball, but shouldn't affect the club. played shot into the breeze with exactly 230 yards so still a birdie chance John Daly it looks as if he's on the road at the 18th and that's a pebbly road but you must play from where it lies there no free drops and beautifully judged for John Daly how he Haru having attacked the fairway at the fifth and catching up in that bank, it was so costly. Spectators crossing over the 15th. Greg Norman striding up three shots ahead of the field. I wonder if he's allowing himself any thoughts of victory. He's hit a super drive here and then just three more holes to go. Oh, we'd give anything for a par finish from here. Well, if anyone deserves another major victory, it's this fella. He's kept going through thick and thin. Never been a moaner.
Fred Couples, who is at the 18th. He has this putt across the green for a par. He's six under, two under for the round today. So this is for a 68. And he's missed just about everything we've seen. Let's hope he gets this one. Another one misses. Now oh, you can miss so many parts and still be around in 69. So he'll be back many times. I certainly hope so. Finished 5-5 five, five for 69. This is Bernhard Langer on the 15th. And he's uh, hit a good drive. You can see the pin from there. He's got 190 odd yards to the front of this green it's probably be, be going for something like a four or five iron gotta be careful not to fly over this one <laughs> i've seen a number of people over the last few days over this green but not this one that's a wonderful shot by bernhard langer he won't give up he'll be in there to the end really splendid shot by bernhard langer very difficult one that might cheer him up a bit after the last hole. Greg Norman, just 162 yards to the front of this green. Pin right at the back. Be only using a seven iron. That's beautiful conditions for golf out here. judge and that's the one place not to be obviously should have been a six arm but now at least the only thing that he's got is plenty of the green to work with now big faldo third shot at the par five 14. how about that for a judge on the speed oh, from david Brown could have done it better roll it up the speed isn't it so a birdie for Faldo and takes him to 11. Norman might drop one at the next. So a lot can still happen. Back to the 18th, John Daly, but for a four for a round of 71. And he finishes the championship at two under par. The 14th, Corey Paving, striding back. Well, if he can get it as close as Nick Felder did, it'll be a wonderful shot. Just started to lose speed. Paving. Crazy to his friends. Greg Norman, just have a look at the shoulder that he has to come up here at the 15th. And I think, yes, he's got a putter. That would certainly be the club recommended by anyone who plays Lynxland golf regularly. It's a two-way break. He must set it off to the left to climb the hill. That swings it away, and then the green will attempt to bring the ball back. You must judge the pace. When you aim it out to the left and hit it too firm and it goes up too quickly, it can continue on that line too far. This is his third shot. You can see it breaking away to the right, and now it should come back. 
No, it didn't come back. It started to continue off to the right, in fact. So it's possible a shot could be dropped here just by miss clubbing, but taking one club too few. Peter Senior at the 18th. In third spot at nine under. He's had three birdies in the last four holes. There haven't been many threes at this final hole, but I tell you what, if he was to get one, finish at ten under, that would make a few of them twick and tweet a bit. Back to the 14th, where Faldo has this little putt for a birdie. And that cheer will go all the way forward to Greg Norman on the next hole. Yes, Faldo's played the last two, but uh, four he got at the 13th was masterly. And two fine shots, and down in two from 30 yards at the 14th was terrific. And Greg Norman, the championship leader, faced with a 15, 12 footer, 12, 14 footer for his par. This to stay 13 under. <laughs> Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock, the question was asked there, and my word, he whipped the answer back as sweet as a nut, stays at 13 under. Two ahead, still work to do. It's hard not to get excited, but Greg Norman's been along this road so many times and been disappointed so many times that uh, he may well, if he does win, say, oh, well, you know, I just be patient. That's the favorite word now. Be patient and take the time and do whatever, but he will be absolutely chuffed to death. Looking up at one of the master scoreboards here that are run so efficiently. And 466 yards away from Greg Norman. His nearest challenger, Nick Fowlow. Nick at 11 under, Greg at 13. Well, it's right half of the fairway, right of centre, the best line to come in. Beautiful tee shot. Peter Senior is viewing his second shot to the 18th. Nine under. 468 yards this, this hole into the bit of breeze. So this is a long iron, two iron probably. that off a bit short. Oh dear, dear. Oh my god. That fizzed in there. That really was a, a nervy one. Let's just hope that nobody there's he rehearsing that. He was on the upslope and just pulled it round. Let's just hope that's not really done any damage. Nobody seems to. it's quite amazing how often balls go into the crowd at, at that rate of knots and nobody's seriously damaged. Of course the there have been many casualties over the years because they, they don't half sting a bit at that pace. But he's behind the railings and he'll get to drop it somewhere clear of the, the crowd, so he may still get a chip and a putt. Peter Hedges, a Walker Cup player, marching along behind there, one of the 
servers, referees, so many of them uh, contributing to this championship. Bernard Langer at the 15th for a birdie three. Yeah. That was recorded, of course. And we have now gone to the shot 16. And here he is. Being there surrounded by a necklace of bunkers. And some wonderful golf. We're seeing Langer has now clawed himself back. One of those shots he dropped at the 14th has been retrieved. Looks like a four or five iron here. Hundred and sixty-three yards this short hole and that's a beauty. Oh, I thought it might have kicked more generously to the flag. Never give up fighting. United States Masters Champion this year and how well he played there. There's a, a lovely view of the green in its defense line. There's deep Pot bunkers, revetted faces, the places you don't want to go. Uh, I wonder what Greg's got. It's probably no more than a five or six iron. The breeze a little bit into the face. Mm. Uh, he got his routine wrong there. Started off with the wrong foot. That's better. Look how tight he gets in and sets the blade. Looks like a six iron. quarter swing again looking quite anxiously as you would under such circumstances but no need that could be a winner that could be a championship winning shot from Greg Norman at the 16th hole where was the hole it was in see Greg Norman's ball just in there and they really have had a few ding-dongs when we were at uh, Jamaica just before Christmas they battled it out uh, Greg Norman and Lion. Greg Norman played a wonderful bunker shot you might remember then at the 18th he put it to within two feet and had it for victory and missed that and Nick Faldo crept through and we really are fortunate in the British Isles with all these wonderful lynx lands that we possess around the shores. Faldo second to the 15th. 175 yards to the front. That was a four iron he was cutting in. And a wonderful shot. Well, he needs birdies and another great iron shot. So we really are having a feast of shot making today. The best players in the world assembled on a fine course, kindly weather. I suppose one or two of the uh, of the old pundits with a streak of sadism in them would uh, would have wished for a nice rain, a temperature about 47 degrees. But um, no, this is uh, as too much work goes into this event to have it spoilt by dreadful weather. But but you can't legislate for that. But look, the final match in the distance, they're going up the 15th. And on the 16th green, the last of the short holes, Greg Norman, and on the 18th, oh, look at this, cross-handed, this Peter Seen, little pitch, cack-handed, and he hasn't done that very well. Uh, what a pity, he's had three birdies in the last four holes, and uh, looks as if he's going to take certainly a five here at the last hole when a three would have put him in at 10 under. On to the 16th green. You see Greg Norman's marker there, just maybe three and a half feet to the left of your of the hole. Bernard Langer, we thought his shot was great. It's been, a, as Peter was saying, a feast of great iron shots. Uh, Bernhard, who is joint third at the moment with Peter Senior, it looks as if Senior is going to move out of that place and join Corey Paven. And uh, Bernhard, well, he's two behind Faldo and four behind Norman. Uh, 
I wonder when he ponders tonight on his decision that uh, he made on the 14th tee, changed his policy of the week, but he's not changing his grip. It's almost named after him now, the Langer. That's for a two, down the slope. Birdies galore, bristling with birdies this championship. He's got the smile back. Look what he did after he sat in. This is incredible, isn't it? Three, three, seven, three, two. Wonderful. What a fighting spirit some people are blessed with. Now, Greg Norman at 13 under. I have the feeling that if he rolls this in, he just takes himself too far away. There are no out of bounds. There are no great dangers. I know the last two holes are, well, the potential five holes, but I would think this one might seal it. There might be a touch of break off the left half of the hole. that hard as he knew the circumstances he's trying to close the door on him and look at those figures there not not a drop shot not a drop shot but one two three four five six seven birdies out in 31 three under par coming home Magnificent 63 by uh, Payne Stewart this morning sort of set the, set the scene for this uh, wonderful round of I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And Greg Norman, of course, if he could get, if he could finish with a three and a four, he'd do a 62, which is quite extraordinary. Two fours for 63. But uh, so there haven't been many threes at these last two holes, although young Paul Laurie got a two. Quickly back to the 15th, Nick Faldo. Uh, opportunity here for a three. Just to go to 12 under and still very much in it. Get it. Oh, and it, he just didn't give it enough. It, it, the unforgivable sin for him at this stage was to be short. Bernard Langer at the 17th. What a run he's had over the last five holes to include a seven just misses the big the big deep bunker Just two holes left for Gregory. He leads by three. You get the feeling that if he does these last two in nine strokes, he'd still be well in. And let's wish him two fours. Cracking drive. There's only been five birdies today at the 17th, and they've got Paul Laurie's eagle. And there have only been two threes at the last hole. Greg Turner and Jose Vivero. It's 
So Peter Senior for a four at the last. It's not too far away, but it's going to be a disappointing five. But even so, it'll be a round of 67. Which in itself is a fine round of golf. And look at that run towards the end. We've just ran out of steam at 17 and 18. And at eight under par, 272 is a pretty good score for four rounds in the Open Championship. Corey Pavin at 16th. Pavin at nine under. Just couldn't get things going today. the ground a little bit heavy there oh got away with it wasn't a crisp strike now faldo who had a glorious opportunity at the last hole for a birdie he's missed a short putt today about a yarder early on in the round he still struck many beautiful shots, but two or three drives just wandered offline and found trouble from the tee. Finds himself in second place, three strokes behind Greg Norman, who's very roaring along. Wind, I think, has just perked up a little bit, about 15 miles an hour. not a recording oh dear. and oh a beautiful shot for line but not enough club or he just caught the ground a bit heavy just not coming off for him. So from the 16th, short the 16th across and up to the 17th, the second shot. Bernhard Langer's second shot. Peter, you're dead right, the wind has got up quite a lot in the last 20 minutes or so. It's about 25 miles an hour now. This is Langer, 205 to the front, he's got his three wood. rattling along um, wonderful shot by Bernhard Langer I said he wouldn't lie down and he really is still in there wanting the, one of those big prizes and in fact Michael we can probably see better than you that uh, that was his driver he had out then at a par four for his second shot but whatever it was it was a great yeah, uh, a, shot. a great shot but it won't be a driver for Norman you got the club now, partner. Be patient. Put that good swing on it. That was his caddy, Tony. An inviting picture of the pin bang in the middle of the green. on the breeze and marvellous 14 under par every two pars from here or in fact a five and a four and he'll break the open championship record for four rounds currently of course held after that epic battle in 1977 by tom watson versus jack nicholas 268 that was two fours for 266 
Well, in days gone by, a shot like that of Langer's would have gone in the hole to have robbed uh, Greg Norman of a title. But Norman seems in control at the moment, and as Bruce was saying, keep an eye on those Open Championship records. Should he finish with a 64, it will be the lowest winning aggregate in Open history. It would also be the best finishing round by a champion, which would also be Tom Watson's record set at Turnbury in 1977. And indeed, if he finished with a 64 or better as champion, he would have the best finishing round and the best opening round by a champion. And it would be set at one event. Norman having opened with a 66, well, he could be closing with a 64 or even better. Fair bit of history in his sights, but the open title is what he wants more than anything else. Defending champion Nick Faldo. Yeah, it's a very good putt from such long range. I mean, you're too far away, really, to hope the whole way. Good fortune that occasionally you do, but that's a very finely judged long putt from Nick, who'll stay at 11 under with just two holes left. Look up at the master scoreboard, which scoreboard's dotted all around the course. Pavin's just uh, got a little chip from off the green. He's nine under. Peter Senior has completed his round eight under. That's the best score so far of those completed rounds. Well, Pavin doesn't really uh, want to drop any shots from here and be worse than, than fourth if he can possibly help it. 56,000 pounds for fourth place. You see, he's got his putting grip, and he's got a little, he's got a little, playing it like a putt. Oh. Oh. Just not enough, but the idea was brilliant. Just bobbed it down the hill with a his straight face club. Norman first. This is quite uh, sharply downhill. Bit of break from right to left. Two putts will do. first time he's thinking all he has to do is not make any mistakes because he's been aggression itself up to him moving his marker one to the left or a putt ahead to the left to so that it's not in Langer's way a slightly flatter putt Langer three under for the day, in spite of that seven. Corey Pavin for a par at the 16th. This to stay nine under. He's had one, two, three, four drop shots today. Faldo just taps in. Very meticulous in all he does. Just taps in. Another par. He's three under today, so if he pars in, it's a round of 67, so he certainly hasn't thrown it away. Just the shot there at the fourth and the seventh where he didn't uh, get a birdie. So Langer to join Faldo in second place. Norman hasn't hit.
hit it. I must say, his uh, two birdies after the seven were of the highest quality. I think his ball is exactly, almost exactly where Norman's would be if he marked it or put it back again. I think the answer would be for Langer to get on with it. so that Langer doesn't tread on his line. Norman's going to go first. It's uh, not a problem in any shape or form. It's the common courtesies. That one golfer will always show to another. to amaze us he should still have enough shots in hand two now they're not going to have a repeat of last year with cook missing from it must be said greater range than that that could barely have been more than a foot And perhaps a lapse in concentration. I don't think it was it was nerves, it was just lapse of concentration, born about with all the fiddling around as to who to putt first. And four would have muted applause after that. What a pity. Remember when he shot that amazing round at Turnbury on his way to victory, I think it was the third round, he still managed to three putt the last green. But it certainly keeps the championship alive. Back on the tee, Faldo. Tee shot at the 17th. I think he's got to do these two holes in seven, and then Faldo's got a... Uh, Craig Norman's got to have another sort of miscue or take five or something down the last to be in with a shout, but... Oh, they're all cheering. Have they're another nice. look at that little putt of Norman's. I think he just hit it too hard. I think he might have done better going straight up and putting it in when he hit. Just catches the left. Other strike looked all right. And if it had been going a bit slower, it might have dropped, but that's the shortest putt I think we've seen miss this week, and what a time to do it when you're cruising. <laughs> Well, well, I wonder what thoughts Bernard Langer has now, thinking about the, the 14th. He took seven at the 14th. Just the one hole left. Langer at 10 under in third place at the moment. And this hole, no pushover. He would have been absolutely home and hosed if he'd popped that in. Now he's got all sorts of thoughts to contend with. I always do that when I try and tap it down. I always fall off. Come on, Bernard. Four for 67. seen him so often blast one offline at moments like this. I think that's a good one. 
There she goes. Scandal that stopped very quickly. Just pitched into an upslope, but safely on the fairway. Let's have a look at Greg Norman's drive here. You see how he just hovers the club above the ground, doesn't ground it. And watch how short the backswing is, but you can see in the strength and his grip of his face. Look at the left wrist there, how beautifully straight it is. A straight line along his forearm, no open face on this one. It's a much more compact swing. That's as far back as it's going to go. And now he drives through, transfers his weight. Still the old trace of the sliding right foot. He'll have that for all of his life. And then that says, look at the shaft hitting him on the spine. He certainly didn't spare it. And that's his attitude because too many times he's played quiet shots at 18 hole and, and paid a price. This time he hit it ever so hard. Now paving at the 17th, just over 210 yards for his second shot. And he's got the four wood. In fact, in his case, it's got a couple of extra degrees, four and a half wood. I'll just be fading right. this one in to take the length oh, off the ball. shot. Stop. 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 Mm. Well, 212 yards, hardly required a four wood. There we are. So the uh, breeze has just uh, freshened as Peter Alice told you over the last half hour or so. And Nick uh, is in ideal position there, hit a very good drive. 168 yards to go into this uh, breeze, which will be playing a five iron. How well he's played though all week long. What a marvelous defense of his title. Keeps it down low under the breeze. A little bit left, but a very good shot. But Paldo seriously looking for birdies now. Really needs two to finish with. Bernard Lang, another wonderful drive by him. How he must be ruining the 14th. Just on 200 to go. Pin in the classic position, which we saw back in 85. Probably a three or four iron. He won't be able to feel any wind here because the grandstands will be protecting this amphitheater. So it might even easily be a four iron for Bernard. Played some wonderful golf this afternoon. It's a bit lower. How nice it's been, too, to see him and Norman chatting all the way around and it's been played in great spirit. Oh, that's a wonderful shot by Bernhard. Right. One putt would really do him a lot of good. Greg Norman just a few yards further on. He's got a good lie there on top of this little pimple in the middle of the 18th fairway. Just on two, just on 200 yards to go. Now, what's he going to hit here? Maybe as little as a five iron. Adrenaline, so he might well have taken one club less than usual. How about that? 
Thank you very much. Well, he gave his supporters a heart attack at the last hole, but what a beautiful iron there. you can say after a reception like that except uh, all of them know what it'll mean to Norman if he should win the championship and it looks very much as he will now but he's had so many disappointments Langer too has been there played his part so many of the world's very best players here this week and showing us their skills it's been a privilege to see it Well, Faldo will have heard all that and will assume that this has to go in. It's not going to get there. It's not going to get there. And one almost senses the roars that have greet and greeted every Norman shot for the last 20 minutes have somehow impacted on his shot. He knows. There's probably nothing he can do now. He himself wants a four at the last for a 67. And he started the day at eight under. Now 11 under and it's not going to be good by two at least. But nothing to be ashamed of if he doesn't win. It's just not his turn. So the 18th, Bernard Langer. Well, if he could get this one in, he would finish at 11 under par. Faldo would then need to birdie the last to beat him. So uh, it looks as if Norman is going to win, but. for 67, 10 under, very good championship for Bernard Langer but just look at that 7, 4 at the short, 11, changed his game plan at the 14, took the driver off the tee and slid it out of bounds and took 7, then followed up with a 3 and a 2, um, that's the game of golf. round and about his ball there's the huge stands all full quiet he's had a good look at this one now he must be thinking well if I two putt this it means that Fowler has to hold his second at the last and that's possible and the way my luck's been running over the last 10 years <laughs> it must happen Uh, 
better pop it in. time that's for 64 yeah. just that miscue at the 17 otherwise he would have equaled the 63 scored earlier today by Payne Stewart. And 64, what about that? Tremendous. And through to the recorders. Hut to check the card. And now the crowd settle to wait for the final game to come down the last hole. This was Corey Haven for a four at 17. Remember, he was over the back in two, chipped down to there, takes five. So he drops back to join Peter Senior at eight under. And Langer at worst will finish in third place. And just that one match out now on the 18th tee. And I must say, many of us thought the day would never come when we'd see Norman win a major. And Faldo, who had to step away three times, having addressed the ball at the 18th because of the noise from up by the green, finally settles down and hits a bad one into the rough on the right. Mike Norman meticulous. If we're the wrong time to miscalculate now, it's going through the card. Well, there's ball, he hoiked it away. He's up against the spectator railings by our television cables. It's not lying all that badly, but he'll drop away. Those railings are not going to be moved. There's the old engraver getting ready. Just tweaking up maybe one or two of the old faded names. All hand engraved, probably putting the, the venue, of the date. I wonder if he started on any initials. It'll all be done by the time the presentation is is made. I don't think that's a good one either. A dribble of applause, but the action is up at the other end. He's down the left-hand side. Faldo over on the right. So uh, they won't have much to say to one another between now and the end of the game together. But really, I think in the last hour or so, it has been Norman who has really imposed his will on this championship. And in his way, affected, intimidated, if you like, the play of all the others until it was too late for anything to matter. He didn't waver. He just shot pars and birdies. And on his way to a second championship. And there's Gene Sarazen, who won this championship before I was born, or about the year I was born, just across the road at Prince's, here to celebrate this great occasion, proudly wearing his RNA tie, 90 or 92 years of age. 
Oh, golly. And he's as bright as a button. Uh, Greg Norman, oh. Yeah, I might have a touch of the old amber tonight. <laughs> or something even a bit stronger. <laughs> oh, it's now got to wait. For, it's all over now, folks, because Faldo is... Is, uh, he's reached his ball. He's going to be dropping away from the fence in a moment or two. He's inside the railing, so he'll drop it two clubs. He gets two clubs length relief. And it's uh, one of the few wayward shots he's hit. if they've got the telly on there he's going to find a place to drop it within a couple of club lengths now there's the ref Richard Cole Hamilton refereeing this match and the observers are Messrs Cook and Lindsay and so as he doesn't look very happy and uh, doesn't look very nice down there but wayward tee shot I doubt whether he'll be able to find anywhere yeah. very attractive. I don't think he'll be able to advance this very far. And it's in already there. there. Oh, he took a bit of a risk there. <laughs> Just imagine he'd have to be out with the old buffer to get that up if something had happened. There's one of the silver rings that go around the base plate. Mr. Harvey. Oh, great skills they have. Just pips it over the old claret jug. It's going to be yours in a minute, my son. So, Nick not particularly happy with his drop there, but the grass very long over that side. It's nestling down. And, of course, he's a long way back as well. He's got a shot of 255 yards to the pin. So, uh, even if he's on the fairway, it's quite a long way. But uh, out of that line, it's really just a lofted club and get the ball back into play. Put the paddle down. This is a fine bomb. Thank you. They did very well from there. I thought he would be struggling to get across the cross bunkers, but he's up and only some 30, 40 yards short of the green. Pavin, in spite of not much applause and looking a bit cross about things, hit one down the middle of the fairway. degrees of loss but it's still a bit too much and probably be better off for the three iron. <laughs> so all this gives Norman a chance to get his breath back, savour the moment. He can't be now be beaten. Only if Faldo would hold his second shot would there have been a tie so it's definitely his. A victory that has looked, looked assured for an hour or so now. But still, the defending champion for a few more minutes gets a terrific reception.
presentation party. Gerald Watts, the secretary of the club on the right. Neil Roach, chairman of the championship committee. Alec Dickey on the left. Michael Benalek, secretary of the Royal and Ancient, second from the left. That's about all the dignitaries. Charles Black, who's chairman of the, uh, on the back right-hand corner, he's chairman of the club's championship committee. And David Hill, who is the championship secretary. Just peeking through behind Gerald Watts' shoulder. They're all there. And a fantastic job they've done. Norm, uh, Faldo, if he can get down in two, will have beaten his own personal record for the championship, which was 270 at, Sandwich, at uh, St Andrews three years ago. will make Faldo want to hold that putt, but second place has never really interested him. <laughs> and this man's had a very good championship. He's level par today and he's hit a lot of indifferent shots but still yet to prove that his fighting spirits can carry his slightly strange golf game. The very high, the very top of the game. There's his score, lots of drop shots. Apparently sharing fourth place with Peter Senior. And short for a time and you saw the veer away to the left for 67 for a four for Faldo which uh, well when he started the day he was ahead of affairs and you thought well a 67 would surely have been good enough and even if he holds it it's not good enough by two funny putt this it goes a bit left to right that part in. That's the difference. You want to do as well as you can. Second's better than third, third's better than fourth. A 79's better than an 80. Very good championship for Faldo. Defending champion finishes second and Corey Pavin has this to stay and finish it, eight under. We'll be seeing more of Corey Pavin when uh, the Ryder Cup's on from the Belfry in September.
Boom. Nicely done. Very nice. Very nice. Nice week's work. The Corey Pavin. Too many uh, shots rather frittered away by him today. Still round in 70. Wells and Norman, two of the players to have all four rounds under 70. Well, let's just join uh, the new champion who's with Steve Ryder. Greg Norman, Turnberry 86, Royal St George's 93. This one's a little bit overdue, isn't it? Oh, I think so, Steve, but uh, you know, I just played great golf today. I knew um, coming in here, my teacher Butch Harmon didn't say anything to me about my golf swing this morning, and I knew I was hitting the ball well, and you know, it just feels great to, to beat somebody like Nick, who's at the top of his game, Bernard, who's the US Masters champion, and to come in and win the golf championship is the most important thing to me because that's what it was. It was just, uh, we've all just shot the lights out and we played great golf, all three of us, well, the whole field, really. And uh, to be able to say that I beat those two guys uh, means a lot to me. And it's not only the victory, it's the manner of the victory, the lowest final round by a champion, the lowest aggregate by a champion. All that means something to you as well, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, it was one of those days, Steve, where I really felt like I never hit a shot out of the middle of the club. It was just one of those days. It was perfect. My concentration was perfect. Uh, my feeling was great. Uh, I never let like, anything get ahead of myself. I, I kept myself in the even keel. I never looked at the leaderboard until 17 when I missed that tiny little putt. That was the first time I looked. And, you know, it was just one of those things where I was in my zone. I was focused. I was wanting to do it, and I did it. What sort of a fright did you give yourself at 17? Well, actually, matter of fact, I, I, it's probably the best thing that happened to me, Steve, because um, I got a little bit lackadaisical. I knew I had a three-shot lead with one hole to go, thinking I was going to make that little putt, and uh, I think I needed it. It really kicked me into gear, and I hit two beautiful shots into 18, and, uh, you know, that was, I think uh, you need a little spur sometimes, and, uh, you know, it was a tough week, and uh, making one mistake out of the whole 72 holes was not too bad. You had Nick Fowler playing behind you. You're playing alongside Bernard Langer. Were you surprised at the amount of support that you were getting out there? Steve, every time I've come back to this part of the world, I've had phenomenal support. You know, I used to live here, and I've had wonderful support from everybody out there every time I've come back. And no matter whether it's a world match play or coming back to play the Dunhill Cup at St. Andrews, these people are phenomenal. They love their golf. Nowhere else in the world do you get support like this at a golf championship. And, uh, you know, they love their British Open. And to be able to say that I won the British Open again means a lot, and I just want to thank everybody out there who's really helped and supported me. How would you like to, to take a course like this back home to Florida with you? Well, you probably wouldn't find too many members because <laughs> it is different. You have to be patient around here. You have to hit uh, the shots away from the flag sometimes just because you know you don't want to miss them in certain places. It's one of the unique golf courses in the world because I don't think you could ever recreate it. And next year, Turnberry, where you won in 86. Well, nice feeling going back to Turnberry, the defending champion, no question about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just happy, Steve. I can't tell you. I, I mean, I'm very tied up inside, but at the same time, I feel relaxed and... Just pleased that I won the championship. Enjoy the moment, Greg. Champion again. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Well, the uh, the defending champion just signing off his card. Checking, finished well. Great four at the last. Tremendous four at the 13th, having driven in the bunker. And, uh, well, he couldn't do much more. He probably wouldn't agree, but, uh, you know, going out and doing a 67 in the final round of the championship when all the pressure is there at the tail end of the field when the, the course is at its most warm is tremendous. He's got a, a tremendous courage and gutsiness about him. And, and so have so many of today's modern players. They, they all came from the four corners of the world, some of them experiencing this form of golf for the first time. Perhaps they were lucky the course was softened by the rain, the wind didn't blow as much as it might have done. But all in all, a, a first-class championship. Again, splendidly organized. Good crowds, not record crowds. But uh, well, next year at Turnberry, we'll be up there and uh, we'll just take you through all the completed rounds, the way they went out this morning. Just see how your particular favorites got on. It really was a low-scoring championship, considering the power of 70 was considered to be very strict, and by some almost too strict. Mm. 
gob at their two rounds uh, under 70. Mr. Guy, William Guy, who struck the first ball in the championship there, finishes at 288. Level for Stephen Ames, a 67 to begin and a 70 to end. We'll be hearing more about him and Jean van der Velde, 267. So it's all good playing. And Ian Wilson steady, but no brilliance from him this week. Perhaps that's still to come later on in the season. Paul Broadhurst had a good finish today. Mark Rowe also a 66, a cracking round from Mark. He was out relatively early this morning. And that was pretty pretty quick work. It's not Laddie Lucas. He was born, the old Laddie, uh, just across the way at Prince's. He'll be watching. Just a little small whiskey and soda. And then we'll be the sweeter than that. Well, well done. The presentation party setting up the table there. All the photographers waiting for this fella. Go and get the old trophy. The old claret judge. The jug. Good. Good. David Good. Begg, press officer on the right. Put that in the bag. Don't waste a pencil. They cost money. That's the ABC and Steve Ryder uh, box there on the right, just to the right of the green. The mighty ABC television station sending their pictures back. Prime time to the United States. More scores coming through. Malcolm McKenzie, very good 67 from him. Andy McGee, Carl Mason, nice old father Thames, he keeps rolling along. E.J. Singh, steady week, US Open champion. Lee Jensen here, but, uh, well, learning his trade. And Payne Stewart, a, a cracking round today, 63. The putt for 62. Craig Parry, many fancied uh, his chances this week. Wasn't to be. Peter Baker, he was... Uh, Two rounds, you see, well under 70. And a hug there from Tom Crow, who many of you remember coming over here years ago. From the Australian amateur champion. And there he comes. And very well deserved, too. He's been enormously successful, and much has been written about him, of course, over the years, making fortunes away from the course, and what is this man, an enigma? Well, he certainly clicked into gear this week, and particularly today. He's had his chances, though. Some of the wounds have been self-inflicted. Some of them have been downright robbery. But he stands there, the champion, 93 on this famous old Lynx. Neil Roach in the middle there with the red uh, rosette is the chairman of the championship committee. And of course, we have the presentation to the amateur, the leading amateur as well, Ian Pyman. I know Peter Cowan will be delighted, the pro from Lindwick, who's been his coach for a year or two. And we're here, we may be seeing once more Gene Sarazen coming out. The amazing man who, one of the few players to have won the professional Grand Slam, the Open Championships of Great Britain and America. And of course, the PJ Championship of the Masters. Happy birthday to you, Nick's birthday.
Julian Pratt, Fanny, all Fanny keep up. Oh, that's all right. Not too much chocolate. Now we've lost somebody. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps Mr. Harvey can't quite get the last initial on the claret jug. But no. Here he comes, all finished. David Hill. Championship secretary. And <laughs> trophy and the envelopes. No readies, but uh, <laughs> nice checks. Yep. And little there's the quake. The second place. And there's the Tooting Beck medal, mm -hmm. which goes to the homegrown player, resident in the United Kingdom, who puts in the lowest score. That goes to Nick Faldo. Our Neil Roach. Miss Captain, members of Royal St. George's Golf Club, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, may I apologize for this slight delay the cup was being engraved. May I welcome you to this short prize giving ceremony and it's my particular pleasure on behalf of the championship committee of the Royal Nation Golf Club to thank the members of Royal St George's Golf Club for agreeing to host this the 122nd Open Championship. In 1894, that's 99 years ago, the Open Championship first left Scotland and it was to the St George's Golf Club, as it was then called, that it came here in the sandwich. And the winner that year was the formidable Englishman J.H. Taylor. This afternoon has seen the end of the 12th championship to be held on this course and we are another name to be added to the list of great golfers who have won here. No Open Championship can be successfully staged without the help of a large number of people. The job of recruiting and organizing all of these helpers was given to the club's championship committee under their chairman, Ronnie McAllister. To a large degree, the success of the championship depended upon them, and they did not let us down. And our thanks go to all who have taken part. And I <clears throat> and I would particularly like to mention the marvelous work done by the Kent Police. The most important ingredient for a successful championship is a great golf course in fine condition, and we certainly had that. And this, time, this is the third time that the responsibility for preparing this course for an open championship has been given to Derek Scarborough, the club's head greenkeeper. He and his team have done a tremendous job during what has not been an easy period for greenkeeping with very low rainfall over several years. And I think that the superb condition of the course for this week is testimony to the hard work that they have put in. Derek has been helped over this last week by greenkeepers from other local courses and our thanks go to them. <coughs> Derek, all of us congratulate you and thank you. I would now like to say a word about the players. There was a record entry this year of 1,827, 
and two weeks ago the championship got underway at 12 regional qualifying competitions and earlier this week at four final qualifying competitions the field was further reduced so that on Thursday last 156 players started the championship proper and of those 78 played through yesterday and today and we now have this year's champion and we shall sort shortly salute him and those that he so narrowly beat. The greatest players in the world have been engaged in this magnificent championship and the skill, the sportsmanship and the good humor displayed by all of them has been a joy for all of us to watch. And I know I speak for everyone when I thank them for the pleasure that they have given to us. And finally, may I thank all of the spectators. We are well aware of the interest that you have shown and we will continue to try to stage a championship that's worthy of that interest. It is you who create the excitement and the atmosphere that makes for a great championship. I will now ask Michael Benalek, Secretary of the Royal Nation Club, to announce the winners. But before he does this, he will make a special announcement, following which Murray Lawrence, the captain of Royal St George's Golf Club, will present the medals and the championship trophy. Thank you. The winner of the 1932 Open Championship with a score of 283, Gene Sarazen. It gives me great pleasure to present you with this silver plate. Sixty-five years ago, I stood right there, and Hagen was there, and he was getting the first prize, and I was just back of him. I'm delighted to have been here because I saw probably the greatest championship I've seen in my whole 70 years of golf. You never see such shots that Norman played, really, in Fargo. It's terrific. I never saw such golf. What are those scores? Are they football scores or golf scores? <laughs> Thank you very much. It's nice to be around all these years. Thank you. winner of the silver medal and the leading amateur player with a score of 281, Ian Pyman. Silver Quake and the runner up with a score of 269, Nick Faldo. I 
I won't do my usual 45 minutes. Um, no, I just want to thank you all so much for your support this week. It's been wonderful. Thanks very much. Thank you. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer for the year with a score of 267, Greg Norman. I forgot what to say, really. But uh, all I can say is that 93 years old, I want to be able to walk out here like Gene Saracen. 91? <laughs> Sorry, Gene. <laughs> but what can I say? It's uh, probably one of the proudest moments of my life, uh, my career, no doubt, uh, to stand here and look up at the leaderboard and, and say that I beat Nick Faldo and Bernard Langer and a host of other great players uh, means a lot to me because Nick is obviously the number one player in the world. He's proven that year in, year out. Bernard's a US Masters champion, and to go out there and play neck and neck with those guys and come out and beat them means a lot. And to Nick, uh, happy birthday and commiserations. I don't know where you went, but to Bernard, enjoy playing with you. But uh, to everybody here, the RNA and Michael Bonalek and his crew, to all the volunteers, and to you spectators. Uh, every time I come back here, I feel like I'm coming home to play golf. And uh, your support has been phenomenal. To say that I won the, the British Open, which is the Open Championship of the world, no question about it, it's uh, the number one championship, the best major. <laughs> to win it once was great, but to win it twice uh, means twice as much pleasure. And again, thank you very much to everybody. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the prize giving ceremony. Thank you for coming, and may I remind you that the 1994 Open Championship will be held at Turnbury from the 14th to the 17th of July. Thank you very much. Well, as Open Championships go, this certainly has been one of the best. Gene Saracen reckons it has been the best, the best that he's ever seen anyway. Each day has produced action to remember, an action worth recalling now as we trace the story of the last four days, the good, the bad, the frustrating, all taking place in a very beautiful corner of England. This is what's happened recently.
where he is, there could be a water buffalo hidden in there. Oh boy, you hate to see this. Now get ready for the crowd. Every third of fifteenth. Thank you. Thank you very much. He said he's lost his old magic day. Faldo starts with a lovely iron for the first hole, just the sort of thing he wanted. Punch for punch, toe to toe. This punt for a two for a birdie. Corey Pavin. What a wonderful putt. What a wonderful putt. Off the legs and the line. He joins them in the lead. Still, he shares a lead. Oh, he has done it. Faldo, this for his two. Norman the champion and a great one too. Well other things have been happening today I'll just uh, remind you briefly of those we've heard that the world 10,000 meters champion Liz McColgan will not be defending her title in Stuttgart after she today pulled out of the championships with a hamstring injury the selectors have left out the former world champion Steve Cram in the 1500 meters as well but he could still compete if he achieves the qualifying time in the next two events. And in cricket, confirmation that Ian Botham has announced that he will retire from first-class cricket at the end of Durham's current match against the Australians, due to finish tomorrow at Durham University. But that's elsewhere. Here, we've got Greg Norman as Open champion. Dave Marr, what kind of a champion has been crowned today? Well, I get very emotional about these things, and Greg Norman has had a lot of things happen to him over the past few years that haven't been very pleasant for him. And he did win the tournament today. Two things come to mind to me. It's about time Greg won another major, and the 64 today is his final round in a finish that I've seen by any champion at any time. 
Faldo showed his measure today. I mean, he was heroic, I thought. The, the par he made at 13 when easily he could have quit was just terrific stuff. I, and I, I just feel that, that uh, you know, Greg won it. You had the three top players in the world finish one, two, three. Uh, the great golf course, uh, another fine open championship. These things are hard to duplicate. You don't get them this special very often. And Langer battled away as well. And, and you possibly agree with Gene Saracen. This was one of the best. Well, Gene goes back even farther than I do. But <laughs> that was a great moment when he said the last time I was standing there, Walter Hagen was standing uh, there. And, of course, it's good to see Gene here. But Greg Norman, I hope he wins many more championships. I'm sure that uh, Nick will. And I wish... Langer would uh, win this tournament once at least. And Greg's win will be received particularly well in America. Oh, absolutely. As well as Australia. Oh, everywhere. I mean, he's, a, he's been a great champion. He's so popular. He's made a lot of money. Money doesn't mean that much to Greg. His success uh, commercially has been great. It's his success in his business hasn't been what a lot of people thought. Dave, thanks very much indeed. And, uh, well, it's been an outstanding week. Uh, golf of quite breathtaking quality. Uh, Royal St. George's, uh, supposedly the toughest of Open Championship venues, well, it hasn't been humbled, uh, but it's been battered and bruised by the best players in the world playing at their best. But none better than Greg Norman, who today at Royal St. George's has become once again the Open Champion. Goodbye.